Builders crew. I am here in Carolina Aquatics for their yearly event. Today, we are actually going to visit with a very unique person who you all may be familiar and unfamiliar with, Mr. Julian Sprung. He's gonna take us on a guide towards all the corals that he finds interesting here in the facility. I want to talk about some of your favorite pieces that you've seen in here. Yeah. They can be all the way across the board, entry level, education. I want to really show what you find interesting throughout Great. your Carolina Aquatics. Well, um, thank you. So we can start right here with one of my favorite corals of all time, which is Duncan Upsamia. Um, it's a extremely hardy coral and it's related to uh, the scroll corals turban area in oh, fact they're that. yeah they're they're really easy to feed as you can see they have large polyps that are you know on average about an inch across they can under certain lighting conditions grow the polyps or expand them even larger than that they readily will eat large food items like mice shrimp you know chopped up frozen food but you can also feed them some of the powdered uh, dried plankton foods. And since they're branching, they're also easy to frag. Uh, you can frag them with a, a bone scissors. You can hit them with a hammer. You can drop them on the floor. They're that hardy that it's not going to yeah. really kill them and it will continue growing. The, the original colony that I got was just four polyps. Um, but now it's, it's just everywhere. It has to be tons and tons of that in the aquarium trade. That's a huge gift to the industry. It, it really is. And it goes all the way back to 91. Many subtle varieties of Duncan Upsamia. The ones we have here have a colony form that is flat, like what we used to call Turbinaria peltata, which is now Duncan of Samia Peltato. They have colonies over, over here. And if you look at the two of them side by side, it's pretty obvious that, that they're very closely related. You know, here, these are small. The, the common name in the trade is cup coral or pagoda coral. Mm -hmm. These are fluorescent green ones from Australia. They can also be gray. Duncan of Samia can be fluorescent green. It can have spots or stripes in the uh, mantle and it, you know, they're hardy, very much the same, easily fed, but the polyps are smaller on this species. Next coral, uh, Nemenzophilia is one of the first corals that was collected and exported, along with uh, Euphilia, the torch coral. But fox coral um, is a, a very strange species. It's its own genus, Nemenzophilia, it's closely related to bubble coral, which is Plerogyra. And you can see here, here is Nemenzophilia, and the bubble corals are here, Plerogyra. When you, you see some of the fox corals, when they're not fully expanded, you can just about make out what look like the bubbles, the vesicles of a Plerogyra, and that connects them. If you see the skeleton of them, it's really obvious because their skeletons are very, very similar. Nemenzophilia is a relatively low light coral as well and relatively low flow. You find them typically in deep water in Indonesia, the Philippines. The specimens that, that we see in the trade are coming from Indonesia. Now, one of the unique features of Nemenzophilia is that they don't have tentacles. Okay. Uh, which is really strange because its closest relative that we know of, the bubble coral, does have tentacles. Yeah, bubble corals, yeah, they'll put out sweepers at night. All the vesicles deflate and out come this big polyp with very strong, sticky, stinging yes. tentacles. The mensophilia does not do that, does not have it. It's a, um, a particle feeder you can use a baster or Julian's thing and put really, really fine food over its surface. And you can see the, um, the mantle will close up just like a mushroom anemone and, and feed on it. So these are frags of a bunch of different varieties of Duncan Upsamia. 
if you take an overall view, they kind of all look the same, sort of different shades of green, gray, brown. But if you zoom in on the individual polyps, you'll see that, for example, these have green tips to the tentacles over there. This one is more fluorescent green. There are some that have bubble tips to the tentacles. This lilac is pretty. Right, right. Yeah, there's a green and gray variety with a ring around the mouth. There are some that have little spokes and stripes on the mantle. There, there are many different varieties of Duncan Epsam. And if you're a hoarder like I am of corals, uh, you, you always want to get every different one. They do behave, uh, the different varieties respond to light a little bit differently. So, you know, when you try them in your aquarium, ideally you want them to be all puffy and expanded. And it may be when you first put them in, they're pulled in. So look for a place with a little bit lower light. So these frags of fox coral in the front have the more typical uh, mantle appearance, um, you know, slightly fluorescent green with the spokes, the brown stripes. But toward the back, you can see some different varieties. And even you can see some individual polyps, so you can appreciate something special about them. If you look at these polyps here, those two little gray ones there, notice how they look like the coral that's called Blastomusa. And that shouldn't be surprising because they're actually related to Blastomusa. That makes sense. Yeah. And in the one in the back, you can see the bubbles, the vesicles that make it look like a bubble coral. And you can compare it to bubble coral here, which is supposedly its closest relative. Yeah. So the two frags over there are the variety that I got also two frags of. It's one that I've never seen before. Probably somebody who was listening to us talk. Oh, actually, the one closer is normal. It's that one. Yeah, this has got like a, like a golden halo. Yeah, I got a halo, and in the center of the mouth, I don't know whether it comes out in your video, but it has a slight red fluorescence. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a, a very strange fox coral. That's a ba this. Bauer Bankai that was fragged as a single polyp, and now it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen new, new polyps all the way around. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, Julian, for taking us through here on all the pieces that you find very unique and interesting. And you took some stuff home as well. Yes, I did. Excellent. Well, it was a pleasure to get to do this with you. Pleasure. And as until well. next time. Thank you. Thank you, Ray Filters. Hope to see you guys again soon.